What's going on everybody? Going Uber here and I am on my way to go get insurance on the Breeding Center slash Going Uber headquarters. Uh, let me tell you, getting insurance when you have reptiles or in my case ball pythons is a lot harder than I would think. I, I was just hoping to get a $1 million liability policy and uh, that's all I thought I needed with, you know, for renter's insurance. But being that I have ball pythons, they're considered exotic pets and animals, so I have to have a specific kind of insurance. Now, a lot of people are just like, you know, eh, just don't tell them about the snakes, just tell them you're storing other stuff there. Yeah, I, I'd like to do that. <laughs> and, and I thank you deeply for that, for that um, information. Um, but at the same time, you know, with being in a small town like this, you know, I don't want to put my landlord in any sort of jeopardy at all. And I, and I would much rather just be, you know, clear and honest with what's going on. And, you know, I'm accursed with that kind of thing. I, I, I don't like doing things that are kind of even slightly, not really dishonest, but not telling the whole deal. I'm just not good at that stuff. And, you know, I would hate to think that if something happened and then, you know, my landlord wasn't covered under her insurance because I may have not told everything on my policy. So I decided just to go keep looking and find the proper insurance. And that's what I did. Um, it ain't easy. It's not easy to find. I mean, we probably ran through 15, even maybe even more. I don't know. I didn't do all the legwork, you know, different places to find one that actually covers that stuff. So. I want to thank Patricia. She did it. She figured it out. She found the place. The only problem is I got to pay it all up front. Yeah, the whole year up front. There is no like monthly payment or anything like that when it comes to exotic, whatever. I don't know why. If I was a pet store, it would actually be cheaper. You know, I wouldn't. I could do monthly payments, but since I'm not a pet store and I'm just like a breeding facility, and I can't be a pet store. I don't have enough pets to make it a pet store. I don't have the connections and the product lines of you know, having a bunch of feed and bedding and, you know, all the things that pet stores have. I don't, I don't have all that. I'm not even interested in that. I don't want a pet store. <laughs> um, I just needed space to be able to upload my videos because the internet is so much better up there as well as have more room to breed my snakes so I can have the option of growing my collection. Now in a few years, hopefully we'll have our house built and I can have a room built just for my snake stuff there and I won't have to rent. But until then, I got to follow the orders and the lines and the way it goes so I did find it I got to pay up front and that kind of goes back to somebody commented on my um, incubator video the other day and they were trying to you know they were just being jerks to be honest with you and some made-up account and um, they're like oh you you have money to build this giant incubator that you don't have enough snakes to fill it with well first of all I want to address that it's a very small refrigerator it's not like a normal size refrigerator it's it's really very small as you can see in the video it's a pretty small refrigerator and it, it will probably hold maybe 10 8 to 10 uh, little totes with eggs maybe will I have that many this season no but I will have hopefully three clutches this season and then next season I will should have six in the season after that I would like to triple that and have you know at least nine to ten so I mean um, the incubator is built for future prospects and future endeavors, and that's why I built it. Um, I understand that he was just taking digs at me, and then he said, also said that, um, oh, you have money for this storefront. Funny you used the word storefront with this made-up account. Oh, you're so slick. <laughs> I don't really care about you, man. Um, but, but you don't have money to do giveaways. No, I don't. Uh, just like this insurance situation here that popped up to where I have to pay it a year in advance um, I wasn't expecting to have to pay a year in advance worth of insurance. So um, You know everything I do is budget and people that are close to me and subscribers of mine that know me real well They've known me for the last couple years at least know that I budget everything I do. I've mentioned this a million times I really budget everything and when I do my giveaways, that's just kind of side change money and you know some small bills that I have extra left in my pocket I put in a drawer and when I have enough then for shipping which has gone up for me I was was $60 but now it's going up to $75 
um, I shipped you Garrick to Meyer, and uh, you know it wasn't like he's raising the price for my sake. It's just his price got raised, so my price gets raised. It's just the way it works. And and I use that for the giveaway stuff. That's just the bottom line. And I can guarantee you, you won't be winning one of those snakes. <laughs> not that you want to do, but I can guarantee you that Just Truth will not be winning a <laughs> snake from going Uber. Guaranteed. Um, so I hope that uh, fills you in and, and takes away your premise of me, um, whatever it was. I don't really get it. Your, your stab at me, it was just a waste of time. But um, so I'm heading up to the shop to get my lease information and papers so that I can bring them to the insurance company so I can get this insurance going, which is really awesome. I also want to address um, a young subscriber of mine who's been a subscriber for a little while. Um, I like this guy. Uh, he's actually a local kid, goes to school with my oldest son, Liam. And um, he kind of felt like I was maybe nonchalantly attacking the community in my videos. Um, now, I did tell him, I said, well, I definitely wasn't. I was really saying how it was awesome that they actually were okay with me being here. And um, I told them to check out everybody else's comments because everybody else's comments were like, oh, that's so awesome that the community's you know, behind you and this and that. Um, so I think you misunderstood what I was saying. And I also want to let you know that um, I love it here. The first year that I lived here, I couldn't stand this place. I didn't like the area. I didn't like the, the, the people. I didn't like, and that was because of me. That was my fault. 100%. I've told a lot of people this before as well, so this isn't just something I'm coming up with a spur in the moment. Um, but after that first year, I understood. I realized that it wasn't really the people here, that it was me, <laughs> you know? Um, going Uber always omits his fouls and his wrongs and, and, and everything. I always do. And I can clearly tell you that it was me. It wasn't really them. It was me looking at them looking at me a certain way that they really kind of weren't you know I, I should have put myself in their shoes and that's what I'm asking you to do bud put yourself in my shoes and, and see this through the eyes of myself and not necessarily yourself um, I love this community I love the people I love the schools I love the school sports and how everybody gets behind it I think that's just awesome and I've never felt so free here yes I was very spoiled in Florida a lot of amazing friends and I do miss them dearly um, amazing job got paid well way more than I should have um, but I wouldn't trade living here for living anywhere in the world not Hawaii not any place in the world not any place you could possibly think of that everybody says oh and I I wish I could live here like if I had three wishes I'd go and live here for the rest of my life this is where I would pick God's honest truth I love the people now I love the community I love the freedom um, you're very young and you haven't you haven't uh, lived in a lot of places, but um, trust me I have and I can tell you right now There's more freedom here than I've ever experienced in my entire life. Um, I love the fact that I can go uh, Shooting target in my backyard try that in Florida. You're gonna get a taser on you. You're gonna get thrown in jail um, You know in Florida If your grass is over four inches long You could get fined and then even put in jail if you don't take care of it and that's no joke. And there's people out there, rulers, that will measure it. Old neighbors of yours down the road will come over and measure your grass. No joke. One second, let me go grab this paper. Okay, so, sorry about that. I had to run in and grab this paper. Um, but yeah, like in Florida, not only that, where we lived in Port Charlotte, it was a training center for the police officers. Now, I've always uh, been very close to the police department and um, law enforcement in general. Um, but... In Port Charlotte, it was ridiculous because every cop car had two people in it because it was a training facility. It wasn't just an officer's training facility, but it was also canine. It was also helicopter enforcement. It was it was a big training field, probably one of the largest in the world. I don't know that as fact, but I do know that it was one of the largest training for uh, police enforcement officers. And... Um, it was a nightmare. Like, if even if you just got pulled over for some random whatever, uh, maybe you're going five miles over a speed limit, they dran ran you through the mud and back because they were training. So it's like every episode, like, uh, training drug dogs. Now, I was never a, a drug addict. I never had drugs or anything like that. But, um, you know, it was very likely if you got pulled over, they would run a dog around your car because, again, they were training. So it didn't feel very free. I didn't feel like a free American there. I felt like I was in a you know, in Nazi Germany back in World War II time, you know? It really felt like that. Um, 
look up Charlotte County, Florida police. Uh, just look up Charlotte County, Florida police, and you will see a guy has a whole channel on YouTube just about how it works there and you know it's like a cop watchers thing or some stuff now i don't agree with this guy's videos i'm just saying that it's very intense here they allow you to live you're allowed to live and do the things you want to do and live the life you want to live as long as you're not harming or bothering anybody else and um i didn't live in a place like that so this place here where we live our town is amazing to me and i love it and I'm sure within years, I will love it even more. I also realized from being uh, from somewhere else that I'm going to be looked at a little bit differently than the people that have been raised here and this and that um, until people kind of get to know me. And, you know, and that happens more and more every day as well. So I'm totally willing to work within the community and with the people of this community because they're amazing people. And, and I wouldn't trade them for anybody. I mean that. So I just wanted to make this video to clear a few of those things up for some people. I, I know I didn't have to, but um, I, I didn't want this young man thinking that I didn't like this community, that I was downgrading them in any sort of way. Um, but I also want you to understand that I have a responsibility to my viewers and to my subscribers to kind of let them know where I'm coming from and that having snakes in here was a little scary to a few people and that's okay, which I've said in the video. Um, you're always afraid of something you don't know. If you don't know about something, you are afraid of it. I mean, that goes for all of us. I'm no better than anybody else. Like, there's things that scared me. I was, I was definitely afraid of spiders at one time until I learned about them. And then I realized, okay, well, spiders aren't just going to get me. I'm going to have to put myself in a position for a spider to get me. And as long as I don't put myself in that position, spiders are great. So, you know, it, it's just a learning curve, you know, and um, a lot of people are behind me in this community, a lot of amazing people, and um, and I'm happy you're behind me too, man. I'm glad you're a subscriber of mine. So I hope that kind of clears everything up for you, or helps out at least, and um, yeah, I'm going to go get this insurance. So, fingers crossed, it all goes 100% smooth. It's supposed to be a done deal. We will find out. I will check back with you and let you know, and then I will end this video. All right, everybody, so I got the insurance, and guess what? I didn't have to have some special insurance for reptiles and snakes. Um, come to find out, I just needed the $1 million liability, and that's what I got, and they checked all sorts of angles. Um, the only thing is now my snakes aren't insured. When you go to insurance companies, they try to tack on as much extra stuff as they can, you know, because they want to make a little bit more money. So they were trying to make it seem like they needed to insure my snakes, and so if I lost my snakes, I could recover from that. Um, unfortunately, I can't really afford that, so I'm not going that route, but I do have the proper insurance that I need for this place, so that's awesome. I want to thank Patricia again. Thank you so much. And, um, I'm going to end this video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm making a video right after this for the next day because I'm going to be very busy on the 11th and 12th, and I want to make sure I get a video out for you, so be watching for that tomorrow. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell. Let you know when I upload a video, and as always, I love you all. See me. Bye.